Welcome everyone to the online Elim gathering. I have a question for you. Do you ask the Lord to grant you his favor? We know that in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22, we are assured that the favors of the Lord are not exhausted. His mercies are not spent. They are renewed this morning. So I would suggest that you ask the Lord this morning to grant you his favor. In Zechariah 8:21 it says, "Come, let us go to implore the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. God's favor is His divine kindness to us. It means that He has His eye on you. He will bestow upon you His manifold blessings. Pero kanino ba ay binibigay ni Lord ang kanyang pagpapala? Sabi ng Panginoon, sa Isias 66, talata 2. Ang uri ng tao na mahal sa akin at nakalulugod ay ang kahabag-habag at mababang loob. Sa aking salita, siya ay may takot. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. I pray that the Lord's favor be upon you today and always. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our online Elam gathering. Wow, tonight is already our 81st online gathering. How time flies. And in just a few days, we will be saying goodbye to September, the first bur month of the year. And you know what, brothers and sisters, today, September 28th, is also a special day. Why? Because we are celebrating the feast day of our very own first Filipino saint, San Lorenzo Ruiz. San Lorenzo Ruiz gave us an example of standing up for Jesus despite persecution. I know, brothers and sisters, that our lives during this pandemic is a tough one. But remember, we have a tougher God. Jesus promised us in John 16, verse 33, when he said, In this world, you will have trouble. Take heart. I have conquered the world. Brothers and sisters, what a great reminder. Jesus has conquered the world. And so with that, let us worship the Lord in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God. 
Dear Jesus, we come to you in humility and we ask you to wash us clean from our sins and create in us a clean heart. We thank you for your steadfast love and your mercies that never come to an end. Indeed, to whom can we go, Lord? You have the words and you are the word of eternal life. And so we ask you, Lord, to be with us tonight in our gathering. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, are you ready and excited for our teaching? I know you are all excited. So let's welcome our teacher of the word, full-time servant of the Lord, Sister Didi Maranyon. Hello everyone! Alam nyo ba, during the pandemic, I became a plantita. Can you imagine? Madami rin naging ganyan. Because, you know, I was just at home. So, naturally, I tried to beautify our small patio. So, I started with one pot, tapos naging two pots, tapos, ayan, tuloy-tuloy na. So now, I really enjoy gardening. I have a small garden. And not only that, I learned so many spiritual lessons which I'd like to share with you today. So I'd also, I'm also going to share with you uh, some of the photos of my plants during the teaching. Okay, so seven things. I'll share with you seven things that gardening taught me. The first thing is to be present. Does that mean, you, you know, to simply be, you know, the plants, they are just there and they are so alive, diba? They're alive in the moment. They are doing exactly what the Lord created them for. So they're growing and they continue to be, uh, they're contributing to the good ecosystem of the world. So they're just, you know, they're just there. They're just living for the Lord. So, gardening encouraged me to practice the sacrament of the present moment. I'm sure many of you have heard that and are practicing this. Now, what does that mean? It means to be aware of everything happening at a particular moment and to experience and feel the presence of God in that moment. So, in the book, Abandonment to Divine Providence. Jean-Pierre Ducoussad speaks of sanctity and holiness in this manner. And this is what he said. In reality, sanctity can be reduced to one single practice. Fidelity to the duties appointed by God. Its passive exercise consists in the loving acceptance of all that God sends us at each moment. Ang ganda, no? The loving acceptance of all that God sends us at each moment. So question, do we accept lovingly everything that God sends us in each and every moment? So it's something that we can reflect about. No? So for me, this hasn't been easy because being a planner and an organizer, I sort of like, you know, my tendency is to think of the future because I'm planning for the future, the next event, the next project. So, the, the, okay naman yun, no? Because, you know, I'm very organized and all. But there is a downside. The downside is I'm not able to enjoy the present. Because if you're always thinking of the future, you cannot enjoy the present. So, I cannot be fully in the moment if it's like that. Now, learning about the sacrament of the present moment, of late, I have been, you know, trying to really apply this in my life. So, practicing this. And um, ito, it's not the benefit. It's not just for the moment. And let me read to you something that Brother Lawrence, he say. uh, a uh, religious brother in the 17th century and his books are still around in circulation up to this day and he talks about the sacrament of the present moment. This is what he said. 
The first blessing that the soul receives from the practice of the presence of God is that its faith is livelier and more active everywhere in our lives. See, so he says that even if it's a practice in that particular moment, practicing the presence of God, it will affect all of our lives. So the first lesson is be present. The second is to need only the most basic things. You know, plants don't need much water or light. Yun ang natutunan ko, di ba? Just enough is sufficient for them. You cannot overwater, you cannot underwater. So, sabi nga nila, sakto lang. Ganyan daw ang mga plants. Similarly, the Lord reminds us that we, we don't really need much. Especially now, no? Wala naman tayo masyadong ginagawa. Hindi tayo lumalabas. We don't really need much. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 8 tells us, If we have food and clothing, we shall be content with that. Ang ganda, no? If we have food and clothing, that's it. Yan na lang kailangan natin. Sirach 29, verse 23, the same. With little or much, be content with what you have. ba? Diba? Hindi na yung masyadong madaming hinahangad pang mga material na bagay. You know, sometimes we are enticed by the glitter of material things. We want, always want something new. Bago, bago, bago. New gadgets, new clothes, new and expensive things. Lagi gusto natin more, more, more. Well, per se, hindi naman masama yun, ano? But when it makes us already discontent and materialistic. It begs us to reflect. ba? Diba? Pwede naman nating uh, medyo uh, mag-self-examination na. Proverbs 30 verses 8 to 9 says, Give me neither, ito pwedeng prayer natin kay Lord, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may become content without God. And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. So, there is a key word, you know, during the pandemic, and that is the word essential. Di ba, nadidinig natin lagi. Essential, yun lang, kung ano lang ang kailangan. That's what it means, kung ano lang ang kailangan. So, being at home for a year and a half, it really taught me that I don't need much to be happy. Parang nag-enjoy na ako doon sa simple, slow living. Now, I appreciate the simplicity of just being at home. Kaya, cooking, cleaning, organizing, ba? Diba? Working from home, and gardening. Yun na nga yun. So, now, I really, really find joy in simple, slow living. So, lesson number two, need only the most basic things. Number three, to bloom where you're planted. So, whether in the garden or in pots, the plants, they will naturally grow. Kahit saan mo sila ilagay, di ba? So, gardening reminds me or teaches me to thrive continually wherever the Lord places me. Kung saan man ako ilagay ni Lord, dapat maging productive ako and, you know, that I will thrive. So, the plants, they grow whether small pot, big pot, whether you put them indoors or outdoors, they will just grow. So, it also taught me not to complain about my situation, but to find ways to really be productive and to make things better. ba? Diba? So, uh, St. Paul tells the Thessalonians in his first letter, chapter 4, verse 1, to aspire to live a tranquil life, to mind your own affairs, And to work with your own hands. Diba? Very, very simple and very basic. So, to bloom, what does it mean? It means to flourish, to prosper, to blossom. Ganda, ba? Diba? So, lesson number three is bloom where you're planted. Number four, lesson that I'm learning from gardening and from the plants is to be silent Not just to be silent, but to thrive in silence. You know, plants, they grow in silence. Hindi sila maingay, di ba? Nangangayon ng mga aso. Ano, the plants, they're just quiet. 
and they bloom in silence. Uh, I was reminded of what, what St. Therese of Calcutta said. We need to find God, and He cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, grass, grows in silence. How they move in silence. Ganda, no? So, dyan sa simpleng patio ko, I have my prayer time in the morning. I wake up really early. I have my prayer time there. So, talagang feel ko yung be still and know that I am God. Diba? Be still and know that I am God. Parang I'm in the midst of plants, nature, the sky above me. Feel ko talaga yun. So, I am quiet in the midst of nature. Ayan. Feel ko talaga and I am having the greatest prayer time every single day. And then in the afternoon naman, that's where I read. I go back and nagbabasa ako, mga inspirational books, mga self-instructional uh, books, you know. So para talagang from the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. And I am there and all these plants and gardens, they help me do that. So I treasure silence because I can feel God's presence when I am there in the quiet and in the silence. So lesson number four, be silent and thrive in silence. Number five, to be a source of beauty and delight. Diba? Plants are beautiful. Ang ganda-ganda nila. Varied colors, shapes, textures. Ganyan na-appreciate ko na mayroon daw mga variegation. Hindi lang all green. Different shades of green. Iba-iba. And plants have, you know, different colors. So, Um, I'm one with the writer of Syrac in chapter 42, verse 22. Now, when he said, How beautiful are all his works, delightful to gaze upon, and a joy to behold. Of course, because it is the original source of beauty who made them. That's in Wisdom 13, verse 3. God, the original source of beauty, created and fashioned All these things. So, si Lord talaga, siya yung top beauty, di ba? Now, I'd like to share with you something that Pope Francis said about beauty. And this is, you know, I've never heard this before. And um, uh, it's, it's something that we can really reflect upon. He said, to preach beauty and show beauty helps neutralize aggression. Can you imagine that? Beauty, that means beauty conquers negativity. Diba? It brings harmony. It neutralizes aggression. So, importante talaga yung to be a source of beauty and, uh, and, and delight. So, personally, I have this desire, you know, ever since, to bring order and beauty to whatever place I inhabit. So, kaya, kaya you know, at home, Tidying, cabinets, labeling, <laughs> labeling yung mga lalagyan, everything, organizing. So, um, pag may occasion kami, ni Don, we don't eat out, di ba? Tablescapes, you know, everything, beautifying, everything. And of course, tending a small garden. Uh, St. John Paul II said something about beauty and this is uh, what he said. Beauty is a key to the mystery and a call to transcendence. Diba? It lifts us. Uh, it is an invitation to save our life and to dream of the future. So lesson number five, be a source of beauty and delight. So number six, to sway with the wind. You know, most outdoor plants, they can withstand wind and rain. They are resilient, tenacious, flexible. So, sometimes nga, you, you, you think the plants are already dead, and then you see a small leaf sprouting. Talagang they're fighting for life. Diba? These plants, they teach me to be strong and adaptable. They, hindi sila madaling sumuko. They fight for life. They fight to live. You know, I am uh, reminded of my mom, uh, Sister Luli Nakar, and her KG, yung Women in Christ. 
these women, they're very, very strong women. They're, they inspire me. You know, they, they've gone through many trials and challenges in their lives, and yet they remain strong, standing in the Lord. So, mga ano sila, 60s to 80s na yan. And yet, for me, I will not call them old women, but seasoned women. Kung meron tayong millennials, meron tayong perennials, sila perennials. Do you know what a perennial is? A plant that lives the whole year, all the seasons of the year. So they are just there, strong and adaptable. In other words, they bloom the whole year, kahit anuman ang nangyayari sa kanila. Timeless, enduring, and constant. So, lesson number six is sway with the wind. And finally, lesson number seven that I learned from the plants is to propagate. You know, yung mga plantita, plantito, alam nila yung propagation, that word. Plants can multiply, di ba? In fact, from one pot, you can propagate from cuttings or magriripat ka, and then you have many more pots. Ako nga, binibigyan ko yung mga kapatid ko. Si Don, di ba? Tapos si Piway, aba ngayon, plantita na din, di ba? So, we're all now into uh, plants, growing plants, and benefiting from this uh, creation of God. So, I am reminded by the Lord's call for us to make disciples of others. Matthew 28, verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We all know that we are called to be fruitful and multiply as sons and daughters of God, to propagate the Word of God. So lesson number seven, propagate. So these are the seven things that I learned from gardening and Again, I will just recap. Here are the seven lessons. Be present. Need only the basic things. Bloom where you're planted. Be silent and thrive in silence. Be a source of beauty and delight. Sway with the wind and propagate. So, brothers and sisters, the next time you see a plant, I hope that you will remember these lessons and apply them in your life. I wish you all life, love, and serenity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Didi, for that timely and encouraging teaching. We are always blessed to hear the word from you. Elam Community's vision is to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. If you want to be part of this work of evangelization, please give your tithes, love offerings, and donations to Springs Foundation Incorporated, BPI Coming Branch, account number 31410667756, or BDO Coming Branch, account number 115801. 5470. Email deposit slip to Springs Foundation PH at gmail.com. We pray for all those who gave their tithes and love offerings. May the Lord bless you a hundredfold for your generosity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh dear Mary. Lady of Elam, sweet and pure, pray that your Son Jesus will, to innocence and holiness restore the hearts and minds of long lost souls. Pray that the seed of glad tidings sown in our hearts will stir us to great hope, faith, and love. Pray for the vision and intentions of community and of the Church, that with the Lord's watchful care and generous provisions, they shall all be. Pray that the polluted world and on institutions will, for a powerful outpouring of the latter rain, experience the blessings of fresh living water, a renewal of the spirit and healing of our land and of all nations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Healy Missions Prayer Lord, I make myself available for the ministry of missionary evangelization, on my knees or in the mission field, within our borders or on foreign soil, for a single soul or for the multitudes. Empower me for abundant soul winning. By your Spirit, make me an instrument of your love and mercy, a witness, bold and unashamed, and an inspiring bearer of the good news. Send us the laborers, technology, and resources to reach the world. Help us break barriers, overcome obstacles, and penetrate new territories, that all the peoples of the earth may know that you are God and there is no other. And to all those who reach, Lord, raise them up to become your true disciples. Here I am, Lord, send me, in Jesus' name, Amen. Horatio Imperata, merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all, this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, our Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sea, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calumson, pray for us. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, give us the grace to practice the sacrament of the present moment, to experience your presence every single day of our lives. Give us peace, give us joy in our hearts, and most of all, give us the grace to be grateful for everything that you give us and everything that you allow us to experience. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we just ended another online Elam gathering. I hope that you are blessed, refreshed, and encouraged, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us, and may we all have a victorious week ahead. See you again next week. God bless, and stay safe. Bye!
Now the past doesn't 